So this is an ASUS AC68U wireless router. If you have watched my videos, you probably remember that this is my favorite wireless router. I've actually been using it for more than four years now, and I'm really happy with it. I've already made many videos and talked about some of its interesting features. And today I want to talk about another one. So basically, as we all know, the wireless routers, including this one, have a WAN or internet port, which is used for the internet connection. This one though has a feature called Dual WAN, which allows you to connect two internet connections from two different internet service providers at the same time. So what? So you can use the secondary WAN as a backup internet connection. For example, if the primary for any reason goes down, it will automatically switch to the secondary connection. Or it can also be used for load balancing purposes, which can optimize the bandwidth and maximize the throughput. Hmm, interesting. But how is that even possible when there is only one WAN port? Well, you can set up one of the LAN ports to act as the secondary WAN port, or even use one of the USB ports for that. A USB port? So how am I gonna use a USB port for the secondary WAN? The USB ports can be used for many different purposes. One of them is to connect the USB modem to the router. This USB modem can be either a 3G, 4G USB wireless dongle or even an Android phone. Interesting. So let's give it a try then, shall we? First of all, I'm going to use my Android phone for the secondary WAN connection. But before I even enable the dual WAN feature, I'm going to connect the phone and set up the internet connection and make sure it is working fine before I continue with the dual WAN option. So my computer is directly connected to the wireless router and I'm going to use this computer to set up the router and also test the internet connection. So first of all, I'm going to connect my phone with a USB cable to the wireless router. And then I will enable the USB mode internet connection. I will be using my Android phone, not a USB modem. So I'm going to select that here. Finally, I will enable the USB tethering option on the phone. Now let's enable the dual WAN option. I will use the actual WAN port as the primary WAN and the USB port as the secondary WAN. But as you can see, I can also use one of the Ethernet LAN ports for the primary or the secondary WAN. So for now, I'm going to use the failover option. This is basically going to use the primary WAN port for the internet connection. And if it goes down, then it will switch to the secondary port, which in my case is going to be the USB port. The auto network detection would determine how long it takes before it actually switches to the secondary WAN. With these default values, the failover detection time should be around 60 seconds.
As you can see, even after reconnecting the primary WAN, it still keeps on using the secondary WAN. And it is not going to switch back to the primary WAN until actually the secondary one goes down. I would rather have it switch back to the primary WAN as soon as it goes back online, because my primary WAN is much faster than the secondary WAN. So to fix that I just need to make sure that I have checked this allow fail back option here. Now I'm going to try the load balance feature. This is basically going to distribute the load between the primary and secondary WAN. By default it is going to send 3 out of 4 transmissions through the primary WAN. And depending on the bandwidth of my primary and secondary internet connections, I might want to change these numbers. I'm not going to change it though, instead I'm going to add 2 routing rules. With these rules, I can configure a specific device to use either the primary or secondary WAN. For example, I'm going to let my computer number 1 use the primary WAN and computer number 2 use the secondary WAN all the time. A good way to make sure the routing rules are working fine or not is to check the public IP address of the computers. Computer number 1 must show the public IP address of the ISP1 and computer number 2 must show the public IP address of the ISP2. I can check the computer's public IP address by just googling what is my public IP address. Alright, that was pretty much it. Hope you liked this video. Please don't forget to hit that like button if you liked this video. And subscribe to my channel if you're not. I would really appreciate your support. It definitely helps me to make more and better content on this channel. Thank you again and I will see you next time.